Hi there, this is video 619. So we are going to graph a linear inequality and it's going to be based on a word problem. So on the right hand side here, I threw some steps. The things extra that we have to do, we got to assign some variables, then we have to determine the inequality. And then we graph like we always did. So it's graph it, checkpoints, do you dot it, do you should you do all that. And then you get to check if it's reasonable going back to the original question. So there's just a couple extra steps in there, nothing too difficult, and I'll give you some pointers along the way to make it easier for you. All right, so let's get started. A cell phone producer distributed boxes of units to retail stores. A unit is either a cell phone or an accessory, and each box can have up to 24 units. Okay. So in other words, he's sending out boxes of stuff and the stuff is cell phones and accessories. If each box must have at least one phone and one accessory in it, what are the possible combinations in this box? Okie dokie. So, assigning some variables. Now, here's the first thing I tend to do. And you don't have to, but it works for me. When I'm doing a question like this, I use the letters of whatever we're talking about, whatever the question is about, instead of X and Y. I will switch to X and Y when I get around to the graphing part, but at least at the start, I don't. So I'm gonna say A is equal to the number of accessories. In the box. And C is the number of cell phones in a box. There, it's just randomly throwing in a couple for no reason. All right, so if each and each box can have up to 24 units. So this is an inequality. So the number of accessories plus the number of cell phones has to be less than or equal to 24. Now, just because, and it's good practice, let's make this into a full-on equation, um, inequality. So, what do we start with? Mm -hmm. So, it's a set of all x, y, Right? That's going to be the same every single time we do that. Oops, I wrote x, y, I got a, c. Well, you know what? I'm going to make this equal to x and this equal to y. And then we have x plus y is less than or equal to 24. You're probably going, well, why didn't you just use x and y in the first place? Well, in this question, I probably could have. When they get more complicated, I just find it easier. Um, well, you'll see in the next one why I do that, such that x plus y is less than or equal to 24. x is an element. Now, first of all, this is where we go R win. Okay, can you have a fractional decimal phone? No. So real numbers are no good because there's no fractions. Can you have negative ones? No. 99% of the time, if you're talking about some kind of a word, weird, bleh, sorry, word problem in real life, it's either going to be whole numbers or natural numbers. Now, this question specifically says each box must have at least one phone and one accessory. So the least you can have is one, which kind of is another way of saying zero doesn't work. Natural numbers. So that's my domain. My x can be a natural number. And my range. Remember this one is domain. And this one is range. And that will become so important in actually in the next section, plus in math uh, three. 
you might as well start getting used to hearing domain rank. All right, so. Hmm. We got a problem. And I'm not going to reshoot this video. I'm going to change my question. Yours will be changed on the version you have. I'm going to make the box smaller. Do you know why I did that? Truth is, when we went to graph to x plus y is equal is less than or equal to 24, it wasn't going to fit on a graph. It was too big. So rather than reading the video and reprinting, we'll just change the question. All right, so it's 12. <gasps> Anybody yelling at me yet? Because I just made a mistake. Yep. Remember, when you put it into the chart, you just go with an equal sign. Now, here's an example where using my 0, 1, 2 actually isn't going to work, work very well for me because I need two numbers that add up to 12. And if I put 0 here, y is going to come out to be 12, and my graph only goes up to 10. So, how about we'll start with 5? Um, either option, if you want to use 0, 1, 2, then just get a bigger sheet of graph paper. Let me turn that so it's better for you. So 5 plus y is equal to 12 minus 5 minus 5 y is equal to 7. <laughs> All right. We always need three points. So 6, 6 plus y is equal to 12 minus 6 minus 6. Is equal six. And uh, nine. So nine plus y is equal to twelve minus nine minus nine. Y is equal to three. Oops, I should get an order. Okay. Me. I'm gonna just I'm looking over here because I want to do a question in order that we talked about. All right, so we have done our chart. We should graph our points. Five over oops, there's seven. Six over six up and nine over three up okay and then we go back and we look at our inequality which was a less than or equal to which means i need to draw a solid line here it is and luckily they all are beautiful and gives you a nice line like that So again, solid line. What's next? Checkpoints. All right. I really wish there was someone here watching that they could just yell at me and say, you're off screen. All right, so zero, zero, x plus y is less than or equal to 12. Remember, we're always going back. When we do the checkpoints, we need to go back to the original inequality that we created. So zero plus zero is less than or equal to 12. Zero is less than or equal to 12. So that part's okay. So it looks like this part of my graph is fine. We 
we need a number that is somewhere up here. So what if I do nine? So. area so it's the area to the left or kind of underneath our line is our solution set but we have to pay attention because it says sorry you have to have at least one phone and one accessory so that was where the natural numbers came from so I can't use zero and zero because that is not natural numbers and if I put zero phones and zero accessories and don't have at least one of each, so it's no good. So natural numbers. Remember, it's only in the first quadrant. And it goes up like this, and it's dots. Now that last part, uh, check if your question is reasonable by going back to the original question. So you know what? I'm going to pick a random point in here. And that is four and four. So this is my reasonable. So my X coordinate, X refers to my accessories. So there are x is equal to 4, and that's equal to my accessories. And y is equal to 4, and that's equal to my phones. And if we add those up, 8 things in the box. Now the question said, go back to my original again. Each box can have up to 12 things in it. And according to my reasonable check, there are eight things. So if I pick any other spot in here and put it against that original question, it should work. Now remember natural numbers, it doesn't make any sense if I'm over here, because that would be like minus six and four. But my x coordinate is my accessories. You can't have minus six accessories. That doesn't make any sense at all. So it's no good. And same thing down here and down in this quadrant. Those don't make any sense when we're talking about things in real life. So, ta da, there we go. There is our final answer. And it is this area, and it is all pretty and dotted. Thank you.